so that you can be tuned in to all my upcoming videos. Hi everyone. Today we're going to do chicken parm and I'm really excited about this one because I love chicken parm. What I did was I've already fried a few of the pieces of chicken up just so you could see the color that you want to get on it. You don't want to cook it completely through because when you put it in the, the sauce and put it in the oven it's going to cook more so you don't want it to dry out. So you want to fry it but you don't want to overcook it. Like I said it's going to go in the oven with the sauce so you don't want it to dry out but you do want to get a nice little crisp on the outside and that's what it looks like. I have my oven preheating to 350 degrees. This is what I've used. I have about two inches of oil in this pan for frying. I have my parsley. This is what I put in my sauce to doctor it up. It is store-bought sauce. I got some ration of you know what from my nephew for doing that, but the next video is gonna be for real sauce. I put garlic powder, I put onion powder, I put parsley, and then we like it a little bit spicy, so I do some red pepper flakes. So I already have some done, like I said, but I'm going to show you how I work this chicken. It's a pretty big chicken breast. So I'm going to get two, two portions out of this. I'm cutting off the fat, like I did in previous videos. I don't want that because it's not nice to bite into. And like I said, I take out this little core thing here. What I after I have all this off, then what I do is I turn it over this way, put my hand on top of it, I take the knife, and I'm basically splitting it in half, which makes it thinner, which makes it cook better, better and faster. And it also gives me two fillets. I have a basic dredging station. Some people use flour first because they say it makes the egg stick better. I don't go through all that. It, I have an egg. I have actually four eggs in this pan. They're beaten with a little bit of water to, to thin them out some. And then I have Italian breading over here. So I dip it in the egg, drain it off a little bit like that, and then put it right into the breadcrumb. And if you don't mind using your fingers and your fingers getting a little messy, all you have to do is just pat it in the breadcrumb. So here's the second piece. Like I said, cooking is not for the squeamish. <laughs> You're going to get your hands dirty. That's why there's soap and water. And you always, anytime you handle any kind of raw meat, you always, always, always want to wash your hands in between. So this, these two pieces are almost done. I'm going to put them in the pan. Like I said, I lined the pan on the bottom with some sauce, put the fillets in there, and then put sauce on top, stick it in the oven. The cheese doesn't go until the end, because that's when you want it really coated with the, the cheese for the parmesan. And like I was saying, I got a ration of you-know-what from my nephew about using store-bought sauce. So I am going to make, my next video is going to be where I'm going to do regular tomato sauce and I am going to make a pan of lasagna and I'm going to take it to his family and then he can give me his opinion. And by the way, his name is Gene. So I'm, I'm done frying the chicken, but I wanted to let you know, this, this oil that the chicken has been fried in is fine for you to continue frying. Um, you don't have to change it out. It is going to have sediment in the bottom, but you're going to throw it out once you're done anyway, so it's okay to still fry. You just don't want it to get too, too hot because then it cooks the outside too quickly. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put some sauce over top of the, these fillets. And you want to put a good amount on them because like I said, they are going to cook in the oven. All the, all the fillets are coated with the sauce. I'm going to cover them with foil and put them in the oven. And I'm going to bake them probably around 30 minutes or so. And in the meantime, 
while they're baking. I'm going to get a pot on so that I can cook the uh, spaghetti. This has been in the oven about 30 minutes, maybe 40, to make sure that the chicken is fully cooked. And I'm getting ready to put the mozzarella cheese on top. Have the cheese on. We're gonna push it back in the oven, let the cheese melt. Uh, I like to get it a little bit uh, done, like where it's kind of turning a little bit brown, because I like that that taste. And while I, that's in the oven, I'm cooking some pasta. I have thin spaghetti in there. You can cook whatever you want. You don't even have to have pasta with it. You can just have the chicken parm, just like it is. You want to make sure the pasta is al dente because it will continue to cook even after you take it out of the water. One of the old fashioned ways of figuring out if the pasta was done, you used to throw it against the wall. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to take a little piece and taste it. Perfect. So I turn it on broil just to get it really melted on the top. And I'm taking it out of the oven. So this is what the finished product looks like and I always put it on broil for a couple of seconds just to get those little edges browned and make sure all the cheese is melted and you like I said you can put you don't even have to serve pasta but you can serve whatever kind you want with it. Stuffed shells are really good and one of these nights I'm going to make that and show you how to do those. So we're going to take it out of the pan. Ooh, look at that cheese pull. That is some good looking cheese. So this is the way the plate looks when it's paired with the pasta. This is one of these delicious. Oh.